Welcome to the virtual demo here tonight. We're at the painting, or not painting, we're not painting tonight. Uh, we're at the printmaking studio here at Bemis. Uh, my name is JD Sell. I am a staff member here at the FAC. I work in the museum. Uh, I'm a museum preparer. And also with us tonight is Kim Sweeney. She's going to be taking your questions and letting me know uh, what you guys have to say. Kim, do you want to? Hi, I'm the voice off off the camera. Um, so if you have any questions throughout this whole thing, just pop them into the Q and A section. There should be a little icon that says Q and A. Just type it in there, and I'll make sure JD uh, gets your question. Perfect. So. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about two different kinds of printing processes. Uh, we're looking at um, a relief print, which is gonna take the form of a wood block tonight. And then we're also gonna be looking at monotype printing as well too. Um, two very uh, easy uh, ways to get involved in printmaking to start. It's a lot of the ways that I started printing myself. Um, yeah, so let's just jump right into it here. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the wood block um, or the relief print. Now, relief printing typically uh, is known just for carving out of a substrate. Um, and that substrate can range from a whole different uh, kinds of materials really. Um, most commonly you'll see them on linoleum. Uh, so you'll hear like linoleum cut prints, uh, which is basically just a linoleum slab that you carve into. It's very easy to carve into. Um, you'll use tools like carving tools to do that. And I brought my set that I haven't used in a very long time here tonight. Um, I don't know if we can zoom in on that here, but you can see the different down a little, down a little bit. There Perfect. Awesome. So you can see the different sort of tip ranges that we're looking at. There's some flat uh, chisel tips. Um, you're looking at just straight edges, and then there are some grooved chisel tips as well, too, that are really great for it, taking out large amounts of material. Um, so that's what you can use in that relief process. Um, also, the kinds of things that you use within this printing process is a brayer that will help spread your ink. Um, there's a multitude of different sizes and actually uh, stiffnesses of that rubber material here. Sometimes you'll see it in foam. Um, a lot of that has to do really with just the pressure that you're applying onto the plate. It also uh, talks about like how much uh, ink load is going on to the plate, different things like that. It also depends on the kind of material you're working with. Personally, I like to work with uh, uh, stiff to medium uh, um, rollers, specifically or brayers. Uh, another thing that's a great handy tool to have is a, oh, what are these called, a baron? Baron, Baron, uh, someone, yeah, someone, someone correct me uh, if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, but this is basically like a hand, uh, a hand press tool. So you can use it on the back of your paper when you apply it to your loaded uh, print plate and you can uh, basically press and rub the surface on the back evenly to distribute that pressure by hand. Um, so you can do this uh, from home without having a major press. But tonight we do have a press, so we're going to play with that once here with the wood block. Um, so let me just show you the wood block here that I assembled. One really cool thing that I really like about wood block printing is it's super accessible. Um, I just used tonight a piece of plywood that I had laying around um, and ended up carving out that relief surface so all of the ink that you see here, it's already loaded up, um, but any of these uh, depressions here or grooves or cutouts here um, will not accept the ink and you're only working with that carved surface. One other thing that I made a mistake on here that I'd love to talk about is if you're working with text with printing, you wanna make sure you mirror your, uh, your text on the surface. So when it prints, because it'll print in the reverse, when you pull off of the uh, of the plate itself. So as you can see, I did not do that. So the FAC here is gonna be backwards when we print this. So it's a little, uh, little exercise of knowing what not to do. So don't follow by my example here tonight with, with the letters. Um, but we have this all loaded up. 
Uh, what's really nice as well too about those different sized uh, brayers is you can get it in and you can add different color details and add different things in. Um, the ink that you typically want to use with this is a slow dry ink or an intaglio ink. Tonight we're working with Akua inks here. I don't know if you can see that right here. Um, perfect. But this is a water base. It's really great, um, especially for around the house and at home. Uh, if you don't want to work with any toxic uh, chemicals that typically come with intaglio inks traditionally. It also is a little bit better specifically on wood surfaces. Um, it has a tendency to not eat away at it as quickly. Um, and it also kind of absorbs all the oils and stuff. Uh, so this kind of sits on the surface, especially if you seal that wood block, which is another thing I could talk about really quick. Uh, I typically like to seal the surface of the wood block print itself. Um, typically I'll do that with just a test print um, with an acrylic paint. Uh, so I'll do the same sort of process that you would do with loading the, uh, loading the print plate itself just by taking your brayer, loading it up with, uh, with ink, and in this case, acrylic. And uh, I will just run it through the whole surface, pull a test print, um, typically looks kind of like a ghost print, which is a secondary pull of uh, a print plate when it's not loaded up with fresh new ink. So it'll look kind of ghostly and it doesn't look super full and it can be kind of patchy and that's totally okay um, for that first pull because you're always kind of dialing in your, your ink load process onto your substrate because each substrate will take it slightly differently. So you just gotta be patient with it and, uh, and work with it a little bit and you'll definitely get to that ink load that you're looking at. This is the first uh, full ink load that I'm doing on this plate. So we're gonna learn together how well and how out of practice I am doing this. So let's move over to our press. I'm gonna grab a sheet of paper here. Grab this. While people are deciding to answer questions, I'll show you really quick. I like to just mist that paper surface a little bit. It helps uh, kind of get that paper ready to uh, take that ink. I don't like it super wet, which is why I just use a sprayer. Um, I'll typically use a spare sheet as well to kind of dab off the excess here. You're really just looking for a nice, nice even kind of surface wet. Yes. Do you, uh, do you print all the colors at one time? Uh, you can, yes. You can also do um, uh, different layered uh, prints, which would inc include making new blocks uh, to build that, uh, that layer process, that color layer process. If you're looking to do more intricate uh, uh, layer designs within, within the piece that you're working with. Uh, tonight, I just rolled it on um, because I had enough space onto it and I had a smaller brayer. So you can, you can kind of keep that a little bit by applying it yourself, but you can definitely do uh, color layers, but it will, it will uh, you'll, you'll have to, um, you'll have to make another uh, plate essentially, or another uh, wood block for whatever substrate you're working with to, to make that happen. And we can talk a little bit about that um, I didn't bring uh, a multicolor layer print tonight, but a lot of that process really just entails breaking down your image, recognizing the colors that you want to use, and you want to start from your darkest colors first, laying down underneath the surface and working up. Um, and you want to think about layering the colors as if you would layer a composition as well too. So you build in you know, your background, you look into your foreground, you look at any details, um, and you just continue to build from there. Uh, so that's how you would do a, a multicolor uh, print itself. I hope that answers your question. I went on a little why bit. Doesn't they, why doesn't the paint dry on that? It doesn't dry because it is a slow dry uh, ink itself. Um, so it's designed specifically to stay on the substrate for a long time and it actually doesn't dry until it absorbs into the paper. So if you're working on a surface that is non-absorbent or is, uh, or is 
um, sealed, like what I did with the, uh, the wood block with the acrylic paint over the top, um, you'll see that uh, it will just rest on the surface and it actually needs that paper to dry. And that's how the Akuas are kind of designed. I believe it's a honey base. Um, so it, it, it's a longer drying process time, which is why it doesn't dry on the, uh, on the plate itself. There we go, we're going the wrong way here. These are great questions. Keep them coming. Go down. I really like to see what you're doing. Okay, perfect. Yep. And for the sake of time tonight, y'all, I'm only going to do one print on the uh, press here because this one needs time to dial in for each one. So right now we're just rolling it out. Cool. Can the, can the colors overlap? The colors can overlap. Yes, it's really up to your uh, design preferences for the image itself. Um, you know, the, the colors themselves generally will lay on top of each other if you're not mixing them together. Uh, there might be some bleed that occurs, but it's really kind of up to however you would like to, uh, to have those colors lay on that surface. Nice. Should have added a little more color to that light here. I'm going to move back to the table here. Now, do you prefer working with ink or acrylic? Uh, personally, I, well, <laughs> for printing, I would say ink for sure. Acrylic has a notorious tendency especially here in Colorado. I'm not sure if there's any people watching that are not living in Colorado, but the climate is super dry. And when the climate is super dry and there's not a whole lot of humidity, the paint tends to dry faster. And acrylic is notorious for that here. I'm constantly fighting that in my own painting practice um, and looking to do different kinds of solutions to try to make that paint uh, surface wet a little bit longer. But as far as printing goes, I, I do prefer inks within that, yeah. Of course. So here it is. You can't really see the UFO in the center because I used white. Wasn't thinking. <laughs> but you can kind of see it. But um, you can kind of see here like those different uh, layers. And actually, I'm really glad that some of these things occurred. And I did the, uh, the multi-color on one plate surface. You can see how those start to bleed a little bit. And the more you layer those colors, the more uh, opaque they become. So in that carrot here that you see, uh, I ended up laying down a little bit more towards the center opposed to the bottom, which is why you have that bleed here. And then there wasn't enough green that was laid down here in this broccoli. So there wasn't enough color that's coming in. And this is that dialing in process that I'm talking about. So these are the things that, you know, as you work through your printing method, you see, oh, this color needs more, more, uh, more opacity or it needs more ink on that surface. So I'm going to apply that the next time. Um, a lot of the times when you're printing, there, there is quite, quite a bit of dialing in for, for your print itself before you get it to the point you know, that, that it becomes a finished product. Um, I would say that a lot of printers would probably tell you that, that you're constantly working with, with dialing things in and getting enough saturation on your plate and working with the kinds of things that you have. Um, let's see here. I also brought the test that I did. So I was talking about how I use the acrylic to seal the surface. So this is that ghost test image or, or test print that I did here. And as you can see, it's, a, it's not as consistent. Um, I can pull this one a little bit closer here. We'll get the plate down here. Great. So we can do a comparison. You can see how much darker the plate came out in certain areas than it did on the actual uh, test print to seal off that surface. And that actually helps immensely with your continuation of printing. Um, because if, that's, if that surface is sealed, like I had said, the ink will just sit on top of it opposed to start to settle into the pores of the wood. 
um, you know, it's, it, it doesn't happen as much with linoleum, which is why people tend to work with that. Um, because that, that material, there, there's not a whole lot of porous surface on the top, it's very slick. So it tends to just sit right on that surface. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is that test print that I did beforehand there. Um, and you can really see that it helped really define some of these lines and shapes in there even more so. I am gonna move on to monotype here. And grab these quick. So within a monotype print, it actually is pretty straightforward. You're basically just painting onto a non-porous, uh, non-stick surface. So it could be glass or plex. Tonight I'm gonna to be painting on plex. Um, and uh, basically what you do is you can get an image or you can uh, come up with one on the spot. Typically mono monotypes traditionally are kind of done that way where you're just painted directly onto the surface. Um, and then you pull a print off of that non-porous surface. So that becomes your plate. Um, and when you do that, it just removes that image and you only get one, hence mono. Uh, so you'll get one, one print and it functions more in like a pain relief sort of aspect. It's very loose. Um, uh, it has a, like, typically I use brushes when I do this as well too. So I'm gonna do that tonight. Um, and before I actually start on it, I can show you some of the uh, ways in which they can be used that I've done before. Um, these are a lot of test studies that were done just uh, pulling off of glass. I believe I used a cool with this as well too. And again, you want to be working with ink with monotypes, especially because if you want a longer work time, you want to have uh, a slower dry time on your ink. So working with an intaglio ink or working with the Akua water-based intaglio inks is a, is a great option for that. You can also use oil. Uh, I know people that have done monotypes with oil paints as well too, and have had really great results. All right. Let's see if I can finish this monotype print in 15 minutes here. <laughs> okay. Oh, and another thing that is really helpful, especially when you're working with uh, these Akua inks or Intaglio inks or oil, um, is definitely having some kind of uh, blending medium with you or, a, uh, um, or an extender uh, for, for your, your inks. Um, it'll help uh, make it a little bit less viscous and a little bit more pliable. Uh, so it doesn't uh, get super sticky and tacky and you can uh, do a little bit more detail and refining within that, uh, the, the paints themselves. So I'm gonna actually use a little bit of that myself here. Zoom in higher. Yeah, absolutely. But most of that is kind of my spiel for tonight. Um, Please continue to ask questions while I work on this monotype here. I have a question. Yes. Uh, where did you learn all of this? <laughs> I learned a lot of this. Uh, most of the basic fundamentals of printmaking I actually learned in high school. Um, and also uh, I was taught by a lot of my friends growing up as well. Most of my friends started off as printmakers um, and they really uh, were in love with the process of it. And I was really fascinated by the multitude of steps that you have to take to, uh, to get your end result. Um, I really liked kind of the labor that was involved with it. Um, so I, I, I did it a lot in high school. And then in college, I actually did more screen printing um, than anything else uh, toward, towards the end of my, my undergraduate degree. Um, but yeah, primarily I, I, I learned a lot of this in high school and in college and a lot of it as well too, I've, I've picked up just by continuing to practice it in, in my own studio practice. Um, what is that medium that you're using or is it just like a different shape bottle? This here, yeah. this is that extender that I was talking about. Um, so with the Akua inks, they, they have a, a, an extender agent that you can add to it. It basically just uh, prolongs the dry time. Um, it also is great to, uh, to use when you're trying to thin it out a little bit, because you can also use water with these Akuas. 
um, they tend to break down that binder a little bit. So you don't want to use too much. I try to be very sparing with the water a lot of the times when I'm, when I'm working with these kinds of uh, slow dry, because it starts to kind of defeat the purpose of the slow dry if you add too much water in, um, because water will evaporate much faster than the, than the medium itself that is, uh, is designed and built into it. So that's just, a, uh, that's just a, an extender essentially. Great questions, y'all. What is that picture? Where's it from? It is a flamingo that I just pulled offline while I was at work here. <laughs> that was like a special flamingo to you. Oh, no. No special flamingo. I just like flamingos. <clears throat> Had a, uh, a flamingo um, uh, light for a long time <laughs> that traveled with me. And uh, it just broke very recently. So I'm very sad about that. So I think that's where that came from of why I wanted to do this. Does that mix in or does it go on top? It does. So I'll do a little bit of both. I'll kind of blend, uh, kind of like how you will work with uh, oils. Um, so you get kind of like your base outline done first, and then you can kind of apply more colors to add that layering. So it will mix in. Um, because I'm, I'm working essentially on the surface. It's basically like working on my, my work surface that I have right here, which is, uh, I think this is acrylic as well too. So it's, it's basically- oh, yeah, like right. You remind us, are you painting on glass? This is on, uh, this is on uh, plex or acrylic, um, but you can paint on glass, yeah. I just didn't want to pick up the glass over here because it's very heavy. <laughs> so this is a good question. I was kind of thinking yeah. too, especially with the mono prints. Absolutely. Mono -print why would you convert the painting into a print? Like what extra qualities do you get? Um, one, uh, converting it to a print, you're able to actually move it onto a paper surface. Um, whereas if you've ever tried to paint on just like a, a, a painting or a, a paper, it tends to buckle a lot. Um, also the accessibility of prints. Um, a lot of monotypes from what I remember, um, historically is it's, it was used as kind of a, a, a quick sort of approach to making a, a print or an image. Uh, and, and it can be used a lot in studies um, to try to understand, you know, how to build your image uh, within painting. Um, but personally for me, what I really like about it is, is the painterly quali quality that uh, looks that, that has that functionality of a print itself. Yes, please uh, do. Oh, how is the flamingo put on the glass? Oh, yeah, I didn't even show that. I'll show you the illusion that I'm working with here. So it's actually just taped onto the back of the acrylic uh, itself. That's, I should have guessed that. But yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that also helps so that it stays put. Um, there's, I've made a lot of mistakes in printmaking uh, over the years, and one of them was not up, like attaching an image below. If I'm working from an image, uh, I'll just like tape it to the table, or I'll just set it down quick and be like, "Oh, I'm not going to move it." And then, of course, you know, you move it, and then it takes you know forever to try to realign it if it's even possible to realign. Take our paper. I'm going to wet it. a little flamingo. Great. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Cool. I hope you learned a lot. I know I did. I really didn't know anything really about printmaking before this. Now I did.
Yeah. Oh, you got some. You got some fan flamingo fans. Oh, perfect. <laughs> great. Happy to hear it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Keep an eye on your future emails Bye, for more virtual tours.